Hey, how are you, Ron? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Alia? I'm doing great. Um, first, what part of Texas are you in? I am in Dallas, Fort Worth. I'm in the south oh. part of Tarrant County and between Dallas and Fort Worth. I'm oh, south nice. of Arlington in a town called Mansfield. Cute. Uh, I don't ever know if I went to Mansfield, but I lived in Irving for five years. If you went down 360 from Irving yeah, and went through Grand Prairie and Arlington, you eventually hit Mansfield. Uh, okay. And then um, is it on the way to Houston? <laughs> <laughs> it's a big diversion away from Houston from Irving because you'll be going down 35. But yeah, kind of 35 east and west kind of go together underneath us. Nice. Okay. Well, next time I ever I said if I ever move back to the US, I'm gonna move back to Texas. Well, you need to because this is the best place to live. It's literally the best place to live. I love Texas so much. I got bored. I got bored uh a little bit, and when I get bored, I move, but of any place, Texas is awesome. <laughs> now, I got a question for you, though. Yeah. In Colombia, do y'all speak Portuguese or Spanish? Spanish. Spanish. Okay. Yeah. So where's the Portuguese? Is that all in Brazil and That's things? in Brazil, yeah. Okay. And I don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> Dude, is there, are there people around there that do? Uh, No, not really. Okay. It, like random, maybe tourists. <laughs> okay. I got yeah. you. <laughs> um, so... Overcoming carbs. Let's talk about that. How did you, uh, why did you want to overcome your carbohydrates? <laughs> why did I want to overcome my carbohydrates? Well, it started with the, um, doing the review of the research that was out there as far as what um, the carnivore diet was. And I basically came to the realization when we started carnivore that my body is addicted to carbohydrates. And mm -hmm. one thing that carbohydrates will do or any kind of, you know, food addiction is kind of a substance abuse. And they don't really have, an, I guess, a food addiction category, but they consider it like a substance abuse. And basically when you're consuming your abuse and so forth and over you know overindulging the uh, you don't know how to stop and the dopamine that you have the dopamine release and you get almost like a, a resistance to dopamine the more you get mm -hmm. so the more dopamine you release there's less receptors so you have to do more so then you have to eat more to get an increase of the dopamine release so that your brain is satisfied and um, the fix, so to say, of the carbs are satisfied. Right. And I found out that if you're just like with any other, like an alcoholic or any other person that is um, having an issue with addiction, that um, you have to stop what you're, stop the, the um, input of that source and once you stop that input of that source then your body's like finding other things to do the release of the dopamine mm -hmm. and um i found that with carnivore and i see i was doing keto i've done keto with my wife and i've done you know the low carb and i've done atkins and all that mm -hmm. so you still had the carbs and you still had yeah. that whole influx of the addiction because you still had the carbs going right but when you went to carnivore and you eliminated all that my body actually found a way to say okay you've had enough and yeah. i actually felt full where <laughs> i never really felt full eating carbs and because you just needed more and more and more to get that fix right so the reason why I went to the name Overcoming Carbs is because through the diet, through this way of eating, through elimination of all the carbs, I was able to overcome that aspect in my life. And I was able to say, you know, my body was like, I'm good. You know, I don't need anything. Yeah. I don't need it anymore. And so it, it was a, it was revelation that I wasn't expecting and one I haven't had before because other diets like I said didn't allow you to uh, 
reveal that because you weren't eliminating everything like this diet does. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm so happy you said that because I even forgot that I could just eat buckets of popcorn and never yeah. feel satiated. Right. And then doing this way of eating, I'm like, oh, I'm full. Right. <laughs> it, it, it's like you get hold of, and you ha I have to get the fat because yeah. if I eat it like a lean steak, like a sirloin or something, mm -hmm. I don't feel as full as when I have like the fat coming in with it. Right. Because you can only take so much fat. You know I mean, you can't just sit there and just eat, need, need fat. You know, you're, eventually you're just like, oh, this is just way too much. <laughs> but when you get hold of like a steak or something, you're like, I could eat a little bit more of this. I can yeah. put a little bit more. So you got to have that fat in there with it too. But yeah, whenever I was eating like chips or something, I was just, you know, grab a bag and all of a sudden you're half a bag down and you're like, holy crap, what did I do? You know? Yeah. <laughs> when you start folding in the top and you're like, oh, wow, I ate more than I thought I did. Sure. It's, and it's not just that. It's like bioengineered food. So you keep eating it. Uh-huh. Like high fructose corn syrup. Oh. So when I, I'm curious, let's, let's start early. When I was a kid, I was a fat kid. Okay. <laughs> How... I, but I wasn't, um, now how early were you like, a fat kid? uh, I remember being fat throughout. I was like fat, skinny, fat, skinny. And I'm, uh, throughout my, from being two forward to 10. And then for my teens and twenties, I thought I was fat, but I really wasn't, you know what okay. I mean? Right. But what about you? Up until I was about, I would say nine or 10, I was yeah. a normal looking kid. Okay. I was, you know, I was outside running around and everything. So I was fairly small. I mean, I was like an average kid. Yeah. But um, about nine or 10 years old, about 1979, 1980, um, there was this little thing going around where I don't know um, what in the 70s, they had this big idea about um, exporting grains. To other countries oh, okay have you heard about this no okay well the u.s in the in the 70s and they like the early part of 80 they it was involved with uh nixon and okay president nixon wanted to basically have an export to the other countries especially like russia and other countries and so they had all the farmers and all the agriculture basically producing a lot of grains like wheat oats um barley all different kinds of grains and exporting this well yeah. then all these other countries said we don't need it anymore we have enough okay and <laughs> with that then they were like okay now what are we going to do with all the surplus we have well let's make everybody think it's a good thing to have mm -hmm. so that's when they did the food pyramid the bottom of the food pyramid was all hot what Grains. Grains. And so the best thing you could do for your family at that time was give your family grains. And oh, margarine no. comes out and all these yeah. oils come out. Canola oil. West. I mean, back in the early 70s and late 60s, people were cooking with fat. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden it's bad. And now you need to have, you know, canola oil. That's the best thing you can do for your family. That's the best thing you can do. And at that point, when they started to putting all this stuff out there as being what you need to do and what you should be eating, um, that's when I think we had all the cereals come around. You know, oh, we had wow. a multitude of cereals. You go down in the grocery store and you go down to cereal aisle, and it's like both sides, all the way down, all the way to the back of the store, that's is crazy. every different kind of cereal when you can look at. It. And yeah. it's like. Oh my gosh, you know, the whole, everything changed, you know, butter's bad, eggs are bad. I can remember <laughs> seeing commercials on TV, you know, the incredible edible egg <laughs> and those are gone and beef, what's for dinner, you know? Oh yeah, I kind of remember that. And there's a bunch of commercials about, you know, whole foods. Yeah. And um, all of a sudden now we have things like, now you're cooking with Wesson. And, you know, and it's, <laughs> yeah. like, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, everything starts flipping on you. 
And yeah. at that point is when I think is when I, my whole body composition started changing whenever all this stuff. Because I can remember when I was a kid, the concept of having a snack was yeah. unheard of because you okay. go to your mom or your dad and you go, hey, can I have a snack? And he says, you'll ruin your dinner. Uh, or uh-huh. you'll ruin your lunch. You know, you know, you're going to eat dinner and that's good. And now it's like, you know, got to have a snack, got to have some chips, got to have, you know, some kind of candy or something. And it's like the whole mindset all swapped in the late seventies and early eighties. And that's when mine started. And okay. so when I graduated, when I graduated high school, I weighed 211 pounds. Oh, wow. And, and how tall are you? I'm 5'11". Oh, Okay. Does so, that look chubby? Does that look big? It, it was, I was thick, but I okay. wasn't bad because at that point when I, 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 my last year in high school, I was working at a feed store. Okay. And at this feed store, I was unloading 25 tons of, of feed out of the back <laughs> of a semi. I was working in these, you know, these grain bins, you know, grain silos, and I was, you know, carrying like 60 pound bags of grain and oh, wow. 50 pound bags of feed and everything. And so I was pretty fit. Yeah. And this is like the late eighties. Yeah. This okay. was in 1988. Okay. And prior to that, I had a paper route. Oh, so wow. I was riding my bike and yeah. throwing papers and everything, you know, every day after I got out of school. So I was constantly active, but I was still big. Okay. So if I wasn't doing all that, I probably would have been a lot worse because sure. my whole diet and everything was all screwed up. But what were you eating? So what were you eating as a, a kid before the change? And what were you eating after? Well, the like change? when we were when like when I was real young, it was like eggs and bacon, maybe some pancakes every now and then. Um, but then it was like cereals came involved and mm. um, quick things and. Like during the summers, yeah, you'd have like a sandwich when I was young, you know, at, at lunchtime and dinner, you'd sit down and have with your family, you would have, you know, your, um, your meat and your vegetable and your starch, you know, and you, you'd have like just a, like a balanced meal, you know, an American meal. Yeah. And, but you wouldn't have anything in between and you okay. wouldn't eat after seven o'clock or anything. You'd eat dinner and then that would be it. Yeah. But then... You know, after I got to be 10, 11 years old, it's like, okay, this is quick. Let's get this for, for breakfast. And this is, you know, lunch was at school and mm-hmm. and you eat dinner when you got home and dinner was probably your best meal. <laughs> and then in the summertime, you know, you, you go back to the, you know, well, if you're home alone or whatever, then, you know, during the summertime, you would grab whatever you could find in the the pantry and eat it right. and it's just it was just one of those things where it was probably i mean i had i was addicted to to the carbs and like i didn't yeah. know how to stop but like yeah. a lot of kids you know they don't have that issue they can you know grab a little snack and go on and be done but i get a little snack and i want to keep going <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't, there was no such thing as a little snack. Let's just put it that way. I feel your pain. I understand. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So moving forward as an adult, what happened after high school and like, how did you get to, what was, how big did you finally get to basically? Or what was your biggest? My biggest was in April. I was 440 pounds. Oh, wow. So how did that, it just creeps on or what happened? Uh, it creeps on. It has a lot to do with the stress. I okay. mean, stress has a lot to do with feeding it. Um, job has a lot to do with it. I was at a job for 18 years. Oh, wow. And when I started there at that job, I probably weighed, uh, I probably weighed, I would say maybe 290, 300. Okay. When I started that job, because when I got married, I weighed 270. Okay. And that was in 1997. I started that job in 2001. Right? Yeah, 2000, 2002, I think. 2002 is when I started. And uh, in 2002 to 2020, I went from probably 
290 pounds to 400, probably about 400 pounds is probably what oh, wow. I weighed when I got in 2020. Oh, in 2020, wow. I probably weighed 400 because at that point I couldn't weigh myself anymore on my scale because it wouldn't go above 400 pounds. Oh, goodness. And so I just, I said, you know, heck, I'm not even going to get on scale. If I get on scale and it gives me that error, I'm not going to get back on it. Yeah. So I didn't weigh myself again until this past April and that was 440. Okay. And that's when you started carnivore. Right. Okay. Uh, so prior to that, you were trying to do keto on and off and I understand how that can go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so since April, what's changed in your life? Well, I'm off of blood pressure medicine. Oh, I'm wow. Off of my gout medicine. Um, before uh, going on carnivore, I was taking 80 milligrams of euloric. What's that And for? euloric is for the uric acid for gout. Oh, okay. Um, uh, alpurinol is usually the one everybody takes, and that's, you know, what everybody can handle, and usually that takes care of it. But I was on the max dose of alpurinol, and it wasn't helping. So they put me on euloric because that's what my father was on, but he's on 40 milligrams, but I was taking 80 milligrams. Oh, wow. Because I was just constantly having issues and the gout would actually instead of going like to my fingers or my toes or something it would actually settle in my knees and my ankles so i couldn't even walk i was i was my job you had for that i had you know up until 2020 it was constantly walking around going up and down stairs and everything and then when it settled in my knees i was having the hardest time trying to get around at work Sure. And some days I just had to say, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be able to go out there. If you got an issue, I'm not going to come out there because I can't walk today. Yeah. So, um, I was on that and I've gotten off of that. Another thing that's changed is, is, um, I've been on a CPAP since 2009. Okay. And recently I, I have a program on my phone that measures how many events but when i first went on the cpap i was having over 900 events an hour when i went and had my sleep oh study. wow and so like 900 times an hour you stop breathing yeah oh wow that's crazy yeah i was like what are you talking about 900 is that even possible you know, and they're like, yeah, every so many minutes, you know, like you were having an event, like every so many seconds or something like that, you would stop. And I was like, and so when I went back, you know, for the next week, when they actually put the mask on me, they actually had to put it at 19 on the pressure, the max on the pressure before you go to a BiPAP is 20. Mm -hmm. What's a BiPAP? BiPAP is where it actually breathes in and out for you. <gasps> instead of oh, just wow. the pressure going in so the cpap is just a constant pressure going in to keep your airway open yeah a bipap is where it actually goes back and forth it's, it's almost like being on a ventilator that's crazy so, so you were at the, the like the limit before you had to get there right oh my gosh so um i went on i've been on the um cpap and then i got a new one in 21 at the end of 21 in december 21 and it actually is a variable automatic sensing pressure mm -hmm. that will adjust it according to how, however many events you're having and i put it on a minimum of 12 on mine just to see what it would do yeah well come to find out after looking at going carnivore and I went back and looked at my history on it and everything um if it needs more pressure it'll go up and you know and to knock down your events well when I look at my events per hour I am at one or less than one event an hour wow the CPAP I'm on right now so at some point too some nights I have maybe they say like 0.4 events an hour so almost you know, zero. Yeah. So I'm getting to a point where I'm, I'm probably going to be off of it eventually, I'm hoping. But um, 
I know like my mom has is on one and she's like she's not overweight or anything like that. So I'm just wondering if it's a hereditary thing or you know if I'm gonna have to keep doing it for you know at least a little bit of you know pressure mm -hmm. or if I'm eventually gonna be off it. I'm hoping I'm gonna be off of it. But I hope you're gonna be off of it too. I, I that's I want to be a, one of the things I used to do when I used to be a stomach sleeper, sleep on my stomach when, okay. before I got real heavy. You know, up until I was probably about three hundred pounds, I probably slept on my stomach. Well, I've been sleeping on my back or sitting up since oh, wow. two thousand and nine. Oh, I was no. sleeping in a chair for a while. That's and, really uncomfortable. Yeah, it, yeah, but I'd rather you know. I'd rather sleep. sleep like that than get some sleep than not sleep at all, you know? So yeah. uh, that's what I, one of the things I want to do is I want to be able to sleep on my stomach again, see if I could actually sleep, you know, like I did when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, I was like, that'd be so neat. So that's what, you know, that's another little goal. But those are the things that have actually changed. Um, well, that's amazing. So from 900 events an hour on your CPAP machine down to basically two or almost zero an yeah. hour. Wow. And so, so you weren't on, you're not on any other medications or you were on a, uh, well, I was on those. I'm still doing the testosterone therapy, the repl testosterone replacement therapy until I had my test in, um, in August or October. Yeah. And I took the thyroid for three months, the thyroid 30 milligrams. I took that for three months and I haven't taken any more. I want to see what I am at the test. Yeah. And see if the diet and everything has put me back down into a normal range. And I'm not taking that. So I'm just doing the vitamin B12 injection with the testosterone because the testosterone injection, they say, can mess with your vitamin B. So they give you that mm -hmm. as well. Oh, okay. And um, I've gone off of everything else. And I'm trying to think. I think that's it right now. Trying to remember what all I take because that's some of these are just once a week. Oh, okay. so the testosterone well, is once a week injection, so that's why. Oh, uh, and I'm doing okay. vitamin D every day. So, and I'm so happy about your blood pressure medication. That's great news. Yeah, I was, I was like, it, it's it's still it's in the 130s. It's not like 110, 120, and stuff. It's still around 130 over 70 or 80. But yeah. I'm not having to take the medication. I was doing about 150, 160. Oh, so okay. I stopped taking them and now it's staying down around 130. So I'm hoping as I keep losing weight, it'll even drop down even more. So sure. Sure. We'll see. So, but then that's the last question. Not, no, it's not the last question, but that's another question. How much weight have you lost? Well, that's okay. I lost 65 pounds up to three weeks ago. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. And from three weeks ago until today, I've lost a total of 75 pounds. So in these last three weeks, I've only lost 10 pounds, but it's like, oh my. Went, well, yeah, I mean, when you lose 65 pounds and then you, <laughs> you know, you go to, to 10, you're like, okay, well, what's going on? You know, why am I only losing 10 pounds? And it, it's like, but, you know, I watched Dr. Barry and I watched other people talking about, how when you're going through these, you know, and you're losing weight, you know, not everybody can be Sean White, you know, we can't all yeah. lose 250 pounds in a year. Sure. But, uh, you, you hear, you know, your body goes into this mode where it starts to regulate itself and it, it actually adjusts to what you're eating. Right. And then it's like, it's, so it kind of gets to a point where it goes into a hibernation mode. Right. Where it's, you know, it wants to like preserve itself and thinking that you're trying to do harm to yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you just have to keep going the course until it says, okay, and you're not really trying to kill me and I'm going to just, you know, <laughs> keep going and, you know, I'm going to let go of, you know, this protection or whatever. Right. So I'm just waiting for that moment where it's going to say, let's go again, you know, <laughs> let's kick it in again. Yeah. Because I'm not doing anything different. I'm not having cheat days. I mean, I have okay. been strict, you know, one meal a day. I mean, wow. occasionally I'll have two. Okay. Occasionally, like maybe on a weekend or something like that, you know. But yeah, for the most part, I eat around six or seven at the latest at night. And then I don't eat again until I get home from work and 
until, nice. you know, try to eat again by six o'clock again. But I'd go all day at work without taking a lunch break, you know, and not just nice. drinking water and everything. So I, I don't have to worry about it. But when I'm working at home, see, I work at home basically Friday through Monday. And so, the, you know, I'm off on Friday and Monday at the house. I go in the okay. office on Tuesday through Thursday. But I'm home on Mondays and Fridays. So I've got Friday all the way to the next Monday where I'm like here at the house and I'm like, you know what? I have a steak there in the refrigerator. You know, am I hungry? Or <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's right there where well, I'm at work. I don't even think about it because it's not even where nearby. Right. So it's like, oh, it's just right at around the corner. So you know, so sometimes I'll eat, you know, just maybe a half a steak or whatever, just because I just have an urge to eat. But it's yeah. like, uh, for the most part, I'm doing you know the one meal a day. There's maybe one or two days where I do two, but um, I'm not doing anything, you know, I'm not going and having pizza or, you know, doing, you know, having some kind of salad or anything like that. Or, you know, I'm still doing, you know, either some sort of meat, you know, whether it be pork, chicken, beef, I'm not like lion diet or sea lion or anything like that, sure. but I'll do, you know, sardine sometime with the steak. I'll do, um hamburger patties with you know something with a little piece of steak or something like that but i'm not sitting there and eating three pounds of meat in one meal i'll eat maybe no. <laughs> maybe a steak you know i'm not you know i don't eat one meal a day and you know I, i've seen some people on you know on some of these videos like i ate a three pound chuck roast you know i'm like holy cow how did you eat three pounds of meat you know <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm not I don't know. Doing sometimes that. I can eat a lot. Maybe not three pounds. Well, that's a lot, yeah. But. Sometimes you, your body just says that you you need something. And yeah. Then something. Then the next day you might you might eat like a whole steak one day, and then the next day you come and eat and you like you eat half of it and you're like I'm done. Yeah. It's just you know your body's going to tell you and you just got to listen to what your body's telling you. Yeah, so exactly. I know eventually that it's going to kick back in. It's going to start going again. And that's one thing, too, that um, a lot of people get in on this way of eating. And then they, you know, they have those moments where it stops like this. Sure. They're like, well, if I'm not going to lose weight, I'm just going to go eat whatever. Yeah. Or they'll um, say, sure. if I do a cheat, maybe that'll kick me back in. I've heard that, too. And so I, I'm not going to do, my problem is, is I can't cheat. Right. Because if I cheat, my body's going to go, hey, we're back. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of like an alcoholic, you know, you, they don't go to a bar and take a drink and expect the next day that, you know, they're not going to want another one. Right. You know, if, yeah, exactly. If, if I'm going to eat something like that, then my body's going to say, hey, thanks for that. Let's get some of that dopamine release and everything. You know, it's like, hey, give me some more. You know, it, it's it's like, why even do that to yourself? Sure. Yeah, so I understand. It, it's not like, oh, you may feel bad and you'll take a few days to recover. It's no, it's it's not that I'll feel bad. It's just that my body is going to go. Woo you know, it's, like, it's, gonna, it's like hey i got a fix you know so and it's yeah. food you know it, that's yeah, what makes exactly. it hard i don't want to cheat and i don't want to do it's not i don't belittle people for you know doing a cheat or um having you know those times where they do it, it you know that's your prerogative just like you know an alcoholic's not going to criticize somebody for drinking wine in front of them or you know, or mm -hmm. having a glass of wine. It's like, you do you, I'll do me. Right. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So is your wife fully carnivore with you? She is. Okay. Um, she's the reason why we started. I mean, it was, she couldn't lose weight. Um, she was doing keto. She's been doing keto since 2011. Oh, wow. And Basically, whenever um, she had her thyroid irradiated, they told her it would take probably about a month for her to start needing the, the hormone replacement because her, her body was 97% saturated with thyroid hormone. When they did the iodine oh, wow. test and they did the scan, 
the iodine test is they put a dye in with the iodine and, and yeah it goes throughout your body and then they scan you well okay when they scan her she says she had an angry thyroid and she was 97 percent saturated oh wow so the doctor said well you'll probably go about you know two or three months before your body actually uses up what's in your body you know before it actually uses up that hormone before you'll start seeing the side effects of not having a thyroid well, so why month, was her thyroid irradiated? Did she have thyroid cancer? No, she um, she tried to do um, the medication. I can't remember what it's called right now. I think it's methamazole or something like that. That yeah. uh, to actually slow down her thyroid to her slow down her production, but she had a reaction to it. Okay. And when she had the reaction to it, they were like, "Well, your only other option here is to let's get rid of it." Oh, no. And see, back in 2011, 2012, and that's one thing I touched on on some of my videos, is that if we had known then what we know now, we might have been able to save it. Because mm -hmm. I think if we would have increased her magnesium levels and also um, worked on basically her inflammation at the time, then her body may have been more receptive to her medication and she might not have had a reaction to it. Plus she might've been able just to do it, um, get the magnesium, the magnesium in there. I didn't realize how much magnesium is so important to the body. And so I started doing all this review of um, the carnivore and thyroids and autoimmune and everything and how uh, magnesium is a big help with autoimmune issues and well certain magnesiums and in certain forms you can't get it in the in the tablet form you got to get it in the capsule you know the powder form so your body will absorb it and it was if she probably would have done that back then then she probably would have been able to not have it re irradiated and she would still have her thyroid today and we wouldn't be going through this but once she had it irradiated she was on medication for the rest of her life right so, um, when she went on, they put her on Synthroid. She, well, I was going to say within a, in a, within a month or less than a month, she started having symptoms of not sure. having her thyroid. Right. So it got out of her system quick mm -hmm. and they did another blood test. And basically she was like, you know, her TSH was like, you know, I would say 15 or something like that. Oh, wow. Crazy. In a month. And there's like nothing in her body as far as T4, T3, anything. Mm -hmm. So they put her on Synthroid. And she went on Synthroid for a while. And um, she started having all side effects from Synthroid. Her uh, nails were real brittle. She was having really bad skin issues. Her hair was falling out. Um swelling joint pain and we kept on asking the doctors you know is there any, is there any other type of thyroid medicine that she can go on or is this you know the only thing and we found out about armor and also yeah. uh, um, the uh the nature you know natural thyroid but no doctor that she talked to would ever put her on it until Why? she went to her doctor that she's currently going to in 20, I think it's around 2017. Mm -hmm. She went like six years taking Synthroid and about 2017, she was able to go on Armor. And she's also gone on the uh, Nature Throid and an MP thyroid uh, medication, but she's done the best so far on Armor. Now, um, the insurance company or, you know, your uh, drug coverage they don't like uh armor so right. you, 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 pay a, get better. you pay a lot more for armor oh. than you do others okay um like for her it was costing us like for my insurance it was costing 50 dollars a month for okay. basically a 30-day supply okay. whereas for the synthroid and stuff it was like 10 or 12 but this the Synthroid's a, a synthetic thyroid, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's a lab-based, you know, created thyroid hormone. And um, but once she went on Armor, she was doing a whole lot better, and um, she was gradually gaining weight and gaining weight um, because before 
before she actually had her thyroid irradiated, her heart rate was 144 beats a minute with the hormones, the thyroid hormones that were in her body that were increasing her heart rate. Well, she weighed probably about 140 something pounds at that point before um, going on Synthroid. Well, okay. her her weight just gradually increased, increased, increased. And even though she was doing uh, low carb keto, she wasn't, she wasn't doing more than 20 carbs a day. Yeah. And if she did go above that, she gained weight. Right. Um, and she was already doing gluten-free because she has celiacs. So we, she went to one doctor to see if she could get off the um, Synthroid to another doctor. And the doctor said, well, you know what you need? You need to just start moving around and stop eating cheeseburgers. Oh my God. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I see what this woman eats every day. She's not eating cheeseburgers. You know, there's something else going on here. Yeah. And, you know, other doctors, they were like, no, there's, you know, that's, you got something else going on. It's not the Synthroid that's doing this and all. And she's like, would somebody please just change my medication? Well, we, we finally found a doctor that would do that. And it stopped her from gaining weight, but she still okay. couldn't lose weight. Um, the, prog the, the progression of the weight gain was like, um, she was gaining probably about 10 to 20 pounds a year from 2017 to you know, or from 2011 to 2017. Yeah. So now she'll do, she'll gain some weight, but then it'll come back down, but it takes a lot longer for it to come down. Well, when we started carnivore, she's actually lost 15 pounds. Wow. That's great. And it's the first time she's actually seen a steady de decrease. Now it's not as fast as a lot of people, but just because she's taken a beta blocker, which slows down your metabolism and your thyroid numbers are all off. So she's, mm -hmm. she's totally imbalanced as far as that's concerned. So what we're hoping is, is with this diet and the next time we go in October with her taking the magnesium and um, taking the vitamin D and um, eating meat to get your, ferritin levels up that her body will be more receptive to the thyroid hormone and maybe she'll be able to decrease her thyroid hormone and also get off these beta blockers because she's on such a high dosage of thyroid it increases her heart rate mm, so oh, wow. um she's the doctor calls her a unicorn <laughs> and the doctor's like you have all the, the, you have all the numbers on the chart as being low, but all your symptoms are high. Mm, interesting. So, so like her sweaty palms and her heart rate and um, things like that, those are all associated with hyperthyroidism. Mm -hmm. But her numbers are all showing that she's low, so she's on a high dose. So the medication is basically creating a hyperthyroid situation but she's not because her body's yeah. not receiving the hormone and acting the way it's supposed to so with the diet and with the um the actual supplements that she's taking we're hoping this will all get reversed and we'll be able to get her where the only thing she is taking is the thyroid medication at a lower mm -hmm. dose to keep her normal um she is right now with even the 15 pounds lost she is off of her blood pressure medicine so That's she's great. gone from 2018 she was taking like five different medications and now she's on two she's on the beta oh, blocker and she's on the thyroid medicine right so the thyroid medicine is she's going to have to take it regardless right but hopefully we can get her to where she's just on that and that's all she's taking the rest of her life that would be so great. It'd be great. And that's for one reason why, um, I mean, I've, I've done different diets and she's done different diets. Um, I don't know. Did you ever do the, uh, no fat, low fat craze back in 2000? No. Mm -mm. 
Okay. I was skinny then, so. <laughs> oh, you were skinny in two thousand. Well, yeah. in like in like the two thousands, it was like uh, low fat, so everything you got was fat free, but they increased the carbs. You know, yeah. You could find uh, something that was light or uh, no fat, and it have like fourteen grams of carbs, and the one that was regular had maybe one. You know, oh, okay. so they just That's swapped. Really the, funny. They just swapped the fat for sugar. It's crazy. And, oh, yeah. And so that was a big craze at one point. And then, you know, we did Atkins and we did the South Beach diet. And I did a thing called Way Down Workshop. Okay. Where it's kind of similar to what I'm doing now with the OMAD. Yeah. Um, but it was like you only, you only drink water and you could drink whatever you wanted when you ate and you could eat whatever you wanted. And, you know, whatever. You <laughs> but, you um, ate until you were full. Yeah. But, um, I mean, I lost weight with it. Sure. It was, you know, as soon as you, you know, your carb addiction is still there. So as right. soon as you, you know, I'm still taking carbs. I'm eating whatever I want at the, you know, till I'm full. Well, you guess what? Your body gets to a point where it doesn't know it's full again. So it keeps going. Mm -hmm. And, the way down workshop did not work. It, <laughs> it was way off. <laughs> so at least in, for me, it was. Um, right. But, you know, we did low carb and keto. And um, then I did intermittent fasting. Um, my doctor said, why don't you try intermittent fasting? And I was like, okay, I will not eat for 18 hours and eat in a six hour window. Well, I, you know, diet was out the window at that point. I was, you know, right. that six hour window, I was eating whatever I wanted. I was like, <laughs> I can eat for these six hours and the, the 18 hours is going to put me where I need to be. And, you know, I was like eating nachos and pizza and hamburgers and, you know, just whatever yeah. in that six hour window. But I was being good because I was eating within that six hours. <laughs> right. So, right. you know, it's like, uh, now that I got to 440 pounds doing that, so that, you know, no, that didn't work. My doctor also asked me if I ever wanted to do a bariatric surgery. Yeah. If I ever thought about it. And I was like, no, I'm not going to redo my internal plumbing to, you know, I got to fix what's in my head before I can, you know, worry about what's, you know, the internal organs of my body. I'm not going to start screwing with that. I'm but not going to re reroute everything. I mean, some people do it and, you know, good for them. But there was no way I was going to mess with the design that's in my body. I wasn't yeah. going to redo it. I mean, if, if, if it was intended to be that way, then it would have been made that way. Right. And so I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. So I went on with this. And the funny thing was, is I, I think I talked to you about this at the keto cookout. The, uh, my doctor, when I went to the, went to her, um, she, she put me on all the Medicaid, you know, the, th the testosterone, the thyroid, and, uh, you know, all that said, take the vitamin D and everything, and then come back and, and she wanted to see me every month because I was doing the testosterone replacement and the thyroid. So I went on April 11th, I weighed 440 pounds. And then April 24th, my wife and I decided to do carnivore. And so I started doing that and yeah. she didn't she didn't know i was doing it and i went back to the doctor on may the 11th and on may the 11th i lost 20 pounds <laughs> and when i weighed and when i went to go see her and weighed she's like uh what's going on you know she's like that surely is not the you know the thyroid and the testosterone that you lost 20 pounds yeah what else have you done and i said well and this, i was like worried you know, mm -hmm. I was like, uh, she, how's the reception she going to be? The fact that I'm doing carnivore. Right. So I was like, well, have you heard of me? Have you heard about the carnivore diet? And, you know, she's like, oh, yeah, that's what Jordan Peterson does. Oh, nice. And so I was like, okay, so, you know, I don't have to be so worried about it. And she right. goes, she, she goes, well, I'll tell you what, you keep coming back and seeing me and you keep doing that because it's evidently working. So you so keep coming back and let's see how you do. And went back the next month, lost another 16 pounds. So at this point, I've lost 36 pounds in two months. And 
um, she was like, uh, well, let's just keep going on this. And I went back the next month and she's like, I'll tell you what, um, I lost another 15 pounds, I think, or 14 pounds the next time. And mm-hmm. she's like, uh, you don't need to come back and see me every month, but we're going to do another set of blood work in October. So I want you to come back and see me in October. We're going to do some more blood work. We're going to see what your numbers are. My liver enzymes were good. My kidneys were fine. I was evidently fighting an infection, according to one of my markers or something in my blood. So she had me go on an antibiotic as well for a month. Oh, no. A low-dose antibiotic. Uh, so I went to, this is, you know, in April. Yeah. So I took that antibiotic from April to May. And she uh, she said, we'll reevaluate everything in October and see how you're doing and see what your um, information shows. She had me do a sonogram in May because I had a little bit of pain in my back. So she wanted to make sure I wasn't having an issue with my gallbladder or my kidneys or something. So I did a sonogram and the sonogram showed I had a slightly enlarged spleen and a fatty liver, but not bad fatty liver, but slight fatty liver is what she said. And she said with my enzyme, you know, my liver blood work that was done in April and that she wasn't worried about it. Okay. Because um, she would be worried about it or concerned about it if I wasn't doing the diet while I was doing and if my liver was showed you know, bad numbers on the blood test. So she said, well, we'll see what, you know, we'll look at your numbers again in in August or October. And at that point, we'll reevaluate everything and see where we need to go from there. So if, I may not be doing the testosterone anymore or whatever, but we'll see where your numbers are. I'm thinking my testosterone is going to be a whole lot higher than it was because I was like 150, 159, I think is what my number showed on my blood work. Okay. What's it supposed to be? Like 300 is a minimum. Oh, okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm hoping it improves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping so too. I've heard that, you know, with the, car- the even the carnivore diet, I've heard people's testosterone in- increases naturally. So I'm I've heard that, that also. So I wanna, that even also. in women, women need it. Women need <laughs> testosterone. They don't think they do or that it's not that important to them, but it is. It's highly important. So have you ever had yours checked? No, not specifically. You need to get yours checked. I'm serious. Uh, well, I you probably will. don't need to anymore. That. You probably don't need to anymore since you've been doing this so long. Yeah, I don't know. Everything seems normal. I can sleep well. You know, th- many things have changed for me. So, yeah. But it would be an interesting thing to check. But women should have theirs checked. I, 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 I thought that was the weirdest thing I ever heard of. You know, it's like <laughs> you, you, you associate testosterone with men and progesterone right. and estrogen with women. Right. But they're all important in all of us. Right. And so you need the women need to have it checked too. And it's really weird, but you need to you think I don't need to have my testosterone checked. Yeah, you do. You need to have it checked. <laughs> so Because what if it's the other way? What if it's too much? Like what um, you know what I mean? Well, like I mean, I don't know if that's I would have a deep I don't know if you really can <laughs> on a on a woman. Oh, okay, good. I think the the worst thing is, is that your body's going to do, you know, not have you, well, you're not going to really have too much testosterone as a woman, but you right. can't have too little. Okay. Okay. Oh, I understand. Yeah. I'll get it checked. I'm going to get my blood work done in three months. So I'll, <laughs> you're going to go to your my... doctor and say, can I have a testosterone check? <laughs> you're gonna be oh, like, I just go Why? to a lab. <laughs> Oh, I okay. just go to a lab and tell them to do these blood tests. Oh, you do you do that in your own my own labs or whatever? Yeah, or, yeah. Or something own your similar labs. here. Own yeah. Your labs. Yeah. Something similar here. <laughs> okay. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So because um with my insurance, if the doctor will only send me if they think I need something. So I right. So I have to go myself, anyways. Yeah, I understand. Um, my, okay, so this might be towards the last question. Uh, if someone asked you what you're doing to lose so much weight and you wanted to introduce how you're eating, how would you do it? <laughs> well, huh. a lot of people are going to be scared mm-hmm. just from the whole concept of only eating meat. Yeah. So I would say that I am doing a an elimination diet or elimination way of eating. I've eliminated everything 
except for these things. Okay. I've eliminated all, you know, I've eliminated all sugar, you know, everything like the whole low carb keto thing. I've eliminated all the white stuff. <laughs> okay. And I've eliminated all the green stuff, <laughs> you know, and I've eliminated pretty much everything that's in the food pyramid, except for what's at the top. Okay. And you know, that's the way I would look at it. I've, it's not really, uh, it's not really a diet, really. It's more of a, I'm not, I'm, I'm excluding things because I'm mm -hmm. still, still eating. I'm still eating, you know, things that would be considered in a lot of people's eyes being, you know, bad for me. Yeah. But you know, as the fact that I've lost 75 pounds is, you know, and you can't be all water with 75 <laughs> pounds. You know what I mean? There's got to be yeah. some fat in there someplace that I've lost. Yeah. So, and I love, I heard, you know, Brian from Wet Goes Carnivore had an interview with um, Bart K, professor. Yeah. Uh, and he said something about, uh, losing weight he says well yeah. you can't lose weight but you can lose fat right you know so you just, you're, so i would say that i've lost fat sure i've lost 75 pounds of fat because i know i've increased in my muscle composition i've increased probably in my bone density mm -hmm. so i know i've lost i've gone from 440 pounds to 365 that's incredible. In five months. Yes. And wow. I'm like, there had to be something. And I know it wasn't muscle. And I know it wasn't bone. So I've lost right. fat. And I know I've lost some water, but not 75 pounds of it. <laughs> so, I mean, I probably lost, you know, as much water as I drink now. <laughs> oh, that's another thing. I eliminated soda. I, I got rid great. of that because um, that was like giving my mind a trick. You know, it was mm -hmm. like tricking me thinking I was having something sweet. So oh, okay. I was like, I had to get rid of that, you know, because. You mean like carbonated water without flavor or. or well, I'm like talking soda. about diet drinks, you know, uh, okay, zero okay. sugar, diet yeah. soda, Coke, Dr. Pepper, um, anything, even the flavored drinks, you know, the, yeah. the ones, you know, that are sweetened. I mean, I've had some of the, I used to think LaCroix or whatever was the nastiest thing I could ever taste. And now I'm drinking like Waterloo and LaCroix and bubbly or whatever. And it, because I haven't had that sugar, they're yeah. not, they're not like when you drink it, you're not going to go, what in the world did I just put in my mouth? You know, it's actually, <laughs> It actually has like a, an effect. And that's one thing too, they said, you know, to figure out if you're actually needing a, like a diet drink, like a diet Coke or something. Yeah. If it was, you know, drink some, if you think you're doing it because you're thirsty, drink some water. Right. If you think you're doing it because you're wanting that whole bubbly feeling, um, yeah. drink a, like a club soda or, you know, one of these, you know, um, I, wonder, I guess you can call them flavored waters or sparkling waters and see how you feel after that. So, but don't go the diet soda route because you're just keeping your mind thinking that you're still having that sugar fix. Right. Your mind doesn't know basically what your body's receiving. It just knows that it is received something. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. it's, it's like you get that sweet feeling and it goes to your head and you're like, oh, I got a little fix. It's like right. I can sit there. I can sit there and drink like a, you know, a large oh. drink of a diet drink and suck it down so fast and not even know I had it. Whereas when I have that same drink size with water, I can drink a little bit of it and know that I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. and that my thirst or whatever I had at that time is gone. But right. I could bring down a whole cup of that, you know, that whole diet soda and not even be phased by it. Okay. 
And so your mind is just like, oh, give me more, give me more, give me more. Mm -hmm. Even though you're not getting like the sugar carb influx, your mind thinks you are. Right. So once yeah, I exactly. cut that out and it's like, you know, I, I started drinking water, water. I think um, the question was uh, one time somebody asked if uh, water tastes sweet, it has taste sweeter to you. Somebody asked one time. I did. That was me. Was that you? Yeah. <laughs> In a community post on my okay. YouTube channel. <laughs> I was like, well, it doesn't really taste sweeter, but it does taste different. Yeah, yeah. It, it has a different taste to it. It's not the same as what it used to be. Before, when you drink it, it was kind of just like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I had like the nothing. C word. I had the C word, you know, that thing that went around in the early 2000s. You know, the thing we don't want to mention on here. Oh, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? That <laughs> that C05 i one d no no i don't but somebody else does somebody listening knows <laughs> you know c zero you know the 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 roman numeral five. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to say it yeah. because you don't want that banner coming up on your video <laughs> so yeah 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 exactly. but i lost my sense of taste and i lost my sense of smell mm, okay so everything that i drank tasted like water uh okay yeah and so um that's what i'm getting at is that water just didn't have a taste mm, and now okay. it does yeah and it just tasted totally different you know after you're not having all the sweet the sweet stuff or the artificial sweeteners and things yeah so exactly. that's where i was getting at with that because oh, okay that whole <laughs> Virus I, thing. I thought you said the early 2000s, and I'm like, what? I got oh, I'm lost. sorry. I'm sorry. Early 2020s. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I, th I I'm realized sorry. what you were talking about. No, me too. I should have been a little bit faster. No, no. I, I, was, <laughs> I said it wrong, so you can edit that out. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. I don't edit. I don't edit. <laughs> okay. I guess it'll be there. I'll look like an idiot. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Together, together now. No, because I'm the one that said 20, the, the early 2000s. I meant early 20s, <laughs> early 2020s. But that anyway. was a crazy period of time. Um, yeah, my mind's okay. all screwed up for that. So, Ron, you're such a nice guy. I'm sure people want to follow your story and follow your progress. How do people find you? Well, you can find me the Overcoming Carbs on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. It's all the same. Oh, okay. So, that's where I'm at. Um, awesome. I post my videos on YouTube and share them on my Facebook page. I do little reels in here and there on Instagram. And also, to uh, I started doing little shorts. I figured out how to do a short on YouTube. Oh, nice. So it's basically the same thing as a reel, except for it's limited to a minute versus a minute and a half on Instagram. Right. But, um, yeah, you, you get you get them out there, too. You got your reels out there in your shorts and things and stuff. I do. So. I, do. <laughs> I like yours. Those are those are fun. Oh, Especially thank you. when you're when you're holding up things. And you're like, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I would never touch pork liver, but hey, you go for it. <laughs> so. <laughs> You'd be surprised how nutritious it is. Nutritious it is. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it is, but I don't even think I could find it here. Like I was telling oh. you. I, oh, yeah, exactly. I, the only thing I can find around here, and the, the beef liver I can find around here, is in the frozen section. Oh, wow. Go to a butcher. I know. Yeah. Well, it's in, butchers around here, though. I mean, the only butchers that are around are at grocery stores. Mm, okay. And they don't even get, you know, the, they just get the meat they get and cut it up. They don't even get the whole, oh, yeah. the whole cow there. That's true. So, well, there used you to, go. You could, used to, you could find liver. Right. Ago, I mean, like 10 years ago, you could find it. And yeah, it's too healthy. Can't. It's I too healthy. So. We got to keep it out of the grocery stores. <laughs> 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 okay, Ron. Well, it was super nice talking with you. And um, that's all I got for tonight. That's all you got. That's all I got for tonight. Hey, it's been a pleasure, though, Alia. <laughs> I appreciate it. Or Alia, I should say. It's okay. <laughs> What'd you say? That there's like how many different pronunciations of your name? There's like Alia, 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 Olia. It's just so funny. I don't know why it's so messed up, but it's okay. <laughs> well, 
Alia. Is that right? Alia? Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, okay. It's like uh, Ali. You can say Ali and then uh. <laughs> uh Ali? Uh. uh. Okay. <laughs> All right. I appreciate okay. it. Yeah, you are uh, so welcome. Here we go.